Hey, what is going on YouTube? Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today in this video, we are about to see a very cool unit that I picked up from Amazon with the Prime service. It is called the AXA 4K1 LED projector. And let me tell you guys, there's two things that makes it amazing. The first one is that it is the world's first Pico size projector with 4K resolution. And I'm talking about native resolution. And second, it has a price of $8.99 or even cheaper. The cheapest 4K projector that I've seen before the release of this one was around $1,100. So this one again is the cheapest, it's tiny, it's bright, it's mobile, it comes with 1500 lumens, it has electronic focus and electronic keystone correction. It comes with Osram Quad LEDs and they are supposed to last about 30,000 hours. And it has vibrant color technology, it is a DLP projector, and it is just absolutely mind blowing. So on the side here, you have a few of the specifications that I already mentioned. You can also install it on your ceiling with the mount that it is currently available for it. And it is mercury free as well. And on the back here, we have a little bit more specifications about it. So if you look on top here, it says projection system. Again, there we have the resolution. The contrast ratio is 2000 to one. Um, let's see what else. We have the throw ratio, 1.2 to one. Uh, projecting offset, 100%. And you can project up to 200 inches as well. So the audio, it is a stereo speaker. They don't sound that great. I would definitely recommend getting a Bluetooth speaker or something that you can truly enjoy because you will be disappointed with the quality of the speaker on this particular projector, but that's something that we're gonna talk later on on the video. So let's go ahead and open this box. And it looks big at first. That's because we have a big power adapter or power brick. Here we can see it. And here are the specifications of it. So we have the power supply you have the manuals and if this is your first projector I would definitely recommend you reading them it provides a lot of information we have the remote you have the AV wire and finally the projector itself so it doesn't have a lot of accessories remember they're gonna try to cut down on accessories just because of the price this is again, the cheapest 4K projector that you can find and the smallest in the world. So here we have the projector itself. And as you can tell already, it is almost, it is just actually a little bit bigger than my hand, but it is super small. And I would say it's kind of heavy, but just look at how nice it looks all the way around. Now we are ready here to proceed with the physical aspects of this projector. On the front, we have the stereo speakers that I mentioned before. The quality can be disappointing. I would just recommend that you guys use an external speaker, like a Bluetooth speaker or something that you can plug into the projector. We have the lens here on the front. We have the 4K logo. On the right hand side, we have three fans for cooling purposes. They are kind of loud, but if you have a good speaker, you won't even notice them. On the back side here, we have a heat sink. We have the power switch, the USB port, two HDMI ports, the IR blaster, the notification LED light, and here we have the AV input. We get the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, the power source. On the left hand side, we get the focus key. This is electronic, as I mentioned before. Now for the keystone correction, you have to do it via software. You cannot do it directly here, which is a little bit of a bummer, but at least you can correct it. And uh, keep in mind that this is not out of focus. It is still, you know, you still have to manually fix it, but it is considered electronic. So here we have the TF card slot. On the top, you have the self touch keys. We get the selectors, the OK, the input key, and the back key. And on the bottom side here, we have the mounts, the holes for the mounts, um, in case you want to hook this up to the ceiling, whatever the case may be. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a tripod one. I wish they uh, could have added one here in the middle side. That would have made it a lot easier to set up. So there we have it for the physical aspects. Now here we have the remote. And the first thing I just noticed is that the cap here for the battery is really flimsy. It comes off very easily. The remote doesn't feel premium whatsoever, but it is functional. So here we have the power key. We have the mute key. We have the forward and backwards, the play and pause. Again, the OK with the selectors. We have the back key. And this is the volume up and down. And this is where you focus your projector 
via the remote. Again, it doesn't have the Keystone one, so you have to go into the software in order to fix the Keystone. But here we have, again, the focus buttons, and that's it for the remote. So now let's go ahead and turn it on and see what this thing's really all about. Alrighty guys, so now that we got the projector all set up and ready to go, the first thing I would like to mention is that while well, you are seeing some flickering on this portion of the video, it has to do with the frame rates of my camera. I'm trying to upgrade to something that doesn't do this every time I do a projector review because it is kind of annoying. I can see the flickering right now, so again, I apologize for that. The second thing is that well, we are projecting at about 55 inches and it has the ability to do up to 200 inches as I mentioned before and I did connect the Amazon Fire Stick 4K version and I purchased it for about $25 brand new from Amazon and let me tell you it is totally worth it. So here we have a few settings on the main page. We have music, videos, and photos. This is in case you guys have the TF card connected. You can view it directly from here. We also have brightness. So on brightness, we have three modes, eco mode, standard mode, which is the one that I have, and boost mode. Keep in mind that boost mode will make your fan spin faster and it's gonna make a lot more noise. Getting back here, the next one we get is the input. So we have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and the RCA. And lastly, we get the main settings. So on here we have picture, and you can do the same thing as I mentioned on the previous settings. You can uh, change the brightness. You have um, picture mode, we have it on standard, the color temperature, the aspect ratio, all these settings, you can do it directly from here. Uh, we have sound. Now for sound, having such a poor speaker, I would say we don't have a lot of options on here, and even if you do, it's not gonna make a big difference. Just keep that in mind. But there we have it for sound, we have text, and finally we have options here. And with options is where you can change the keystone correction as I mentioned before. Right now we are on a flat surface, so I have it on zero, but this is where you would change it and you can only do it directly here from the software, which is a little bit of a bummer. They should have added a button dedicated for this that would have made it absolutely easier. But again, in case you need to change your keystone correction, well, you would do it directly there. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and go into video two, since this is where I have the Amazon Fire Stick connected, and I am using the USB port from the projector itself to power the stick, and it works absolutely great. So let's go ahead and click here, and pretty soon we're gonna see the resolution on the bottom says 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz. So let's go here uh, and say not now we don't want to do the screen saver as of right now so i'm just going to try to provide some cuts here to show you the actual quality guys but i mean i can see everything the details on their faces you can see the little pores everything the little hairs it is absolutely crazy i mean it looks almost identical to my sony 4k tv that i have on my living room well the only downside about projectors is that if you have a little bit of light coming in it can kind of make the colors look a little bit washed out, but there's nothing that we can really do about it. All right, so something I want to mention when you're using the Amazon Fire Stick on this particular projector, which is most likely what you guys will be buying in case you decide to go with this projector, is the fact that you need to change the settings of the sound. Like I said before, these are stereo speakers and nothing else. And again, I don't recommend it to be used as primary speakers, but in case you are, you need to go here on settings and then you need to go on sounds or display in sounds, go to audio, and from here, you're gonna go to where it says surround sound and it says best available. So this means that it'll automatically choose the best speakers that you have um, or the best sound quality that you should get based on your speakers. So right now, being a best available, I get no sound. I had to manually change it to only stereo. This is the only way that I get sound from the speakers coming out of the projector. Otherwise, it is not going to work. So now that we did the change, let's go back here. Let me confirm the change. And yes, there it is. So let's go back into the main page. And this is where you guys will see now the quality of the speakers by going on YouTube. And I'm going to play one of my own videos just because YouTube has the uh, robots detecting sounds and if they see that I'm using somebody else's video they might demonetize my own video so let's go here into library let's go into my videos and here we have the latest video which is about the pixel 4 XL versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max and uh, let's go ahead and open this right now I have it at a hundred percent as you guys can tell and let's play it and hear the quality I want to 
What's going on guys, you're here from Maji and Jay. Today, super excited to be able to complete here a comparison between two great flagship devices in the market. One is the Google Pixel 4 XL, which got released recently. And on my right hand side, I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And let me tell you guys, it's been a long time since I've been reviewing devices. And for the first time, I have a very hard time determining which one is better for me. Normally, I like to go more for Android operating system because it gives me the ability to customize it better the way I want to. Um, it comes with more skins for it. I mean, you can just do a little. And there, as you guys can hear, as I said before, the quality is not great. It sounds muffled, it sounds flat, it doesn't sound 3D whatsoever, it doesn't sound like a good quality speaker. And I know I'm using my own video as an example, which is not the best audio either, but I'm just giving you this as an example to tell you guys that you will definitely be disappointed about it. Just get an external speaker and that will fix the problem 100%. So now when it comes here to the 4K recording, I'm going to use a dedicated 4K video for this. And you guys can't deny the fact that it looks absolutely stunning. It's one of the best qualities that I've seen. And maybe it's because it is my first 4K projector. Actually, it is my second, excuse me. My first 4K projector came from LG. And yes, it had amazing qualities. It was a much bigger projector. It wasn't considered that that portable as a matter of fact they recommend it more to have it installed let's say permanently like on your ceiling uh, or something equivalent to where you didn't have to move it all the time but this is a Pico portable projector it is tiny it is very convenient to carry around and it still gives you that amazing quality that you guys are witnessing right now I mean there's not much that you will find out there especially at this price point and I think that access are great I have reviewed access projectors in the past and I did them about four or five years ago approximately and my brother has one of them and he still uses it and it is still functioning so when it comes to quality AXA has demonstrated to really know how to create projectors or build projectors and they have a I would say a decent reputation out there and now that we saw the qualities coming out of this little projector you guys need to let me know down below what you think about it would you buy it would you pass considering that this is the world's first pico size projector second it has 1500 lumens and it is super bright and third it is only $899 and possibly even dropping on other websites let me know in the comment section below if you guys would definitely buy this if you pass on it what I do have to tell you as I've been telling you throughout the video is that while well, the speakers are not very loud they don't sound great whatsoever and the fans are a little bit noisy but that's about it honestly it's a super cool projector with a very nice size and i would say convenient as well with this being said let me know in the comment section below again what you think about it don't forget to subscribe like the video and i'll see you guys on my next one